I've always thought of Maki to be a very interesting character, and this was pushed further after seeing her slaughter the Zenin clan. With the Culling Games at the moment focusing on her, I decided it would probably be a good time to analyse her character, as well as talk about the importance of her character to the story of Jujutsu Kaisen. From Maki's conception, the odds were stacked against her. She was born into the Zenin clan, one of the big three Jujutsu families, which you'd think would be a good thing, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Simply put, the Zenin clan is extremely elitist, sexist and non-progressive. They base the value of his family members on their gender as well as the amount of cursed energy they have and their technique. Those who don't have a high enough value are ostracised and looked down on by the rest of the clan, both Maki and Mai being examples of this. Despite all the odds being stacked against her, including her clan being in the way of her progression as a Jujutsu sorcerer, Maki is still a very headstrong, defiant and standout individual. During the Kyoto student exchange, we get more insight into her relationship with her sister, who is the the most crucial character to Maki's development. Maya had a bittersweet relationship with Maki growing up. Due to Maki's inability to see her spirits, she was able to, as Mai describes it, keep moving fearlessly into the future, whereas Mai, who had the ability to see spirits, was shown to be scared and apprehensive to move forwards. I think this innocent little interaction between the two demonstrates one of the many struggles of being a Jujutsu sorcerer. Regardless of how scared you are, how terrified you are, it's ingrained in sorcerers to keep moving forwards in the face of adversity. Compared to someone like Maki, who is blissfully ignorant of the spirits around her, it's easy to understand why someone like Mai would begin to envy and hold resentment towards her sister. I also think that that the statement of her moving fearlessly into the future is a bit more interesting than it may seem. Jujutsu Kaisen is a series that's relatively progressive in terms of its social commentary. Time and time again, we're shown characters breaking traditional and cultural norms that may be seen as immoral by today's standards. As well as breaking stereotypes, Inmaki is a perfect vehicle for this ideology, namely breaking the stereotypes of women. Maki's refusal to conform to the role that society and the Zenin clan gave her is a perfect example of this. She doesn't want to just be a servant, she wanted to be a Jujutsu sorcerer, she wanted to prove her clan wrong, and ironically enough, it seems like she wanted to be unrestricted. Then you have Mai, who is a direct parallel to Maki in this regard. Maki's endeavours and aspirations to grow and break social norms essentially forced Mai into a position where she had to become a Jujutsu sorcerer, and throw herself into the same dangerous situations and cursed spirits which she feared so much as a child. I want to take the time to bring up a psychological notion named the fixed mindset versus is the growth mindset. People with a fixed mindset hold the belief that their intelligence and talents are statics and that there's no room for improvement. A person with this mindset tends to avoid challenge in their lives and they may give up on certain things easily and become threatened by the success of others. Maya fits into this category. She, unlike her twin sister, was absolutely fine being a servant, living a normal life and just doing chores. Clearly she believed that she had no more potential to be capable of anything but that. On the other hand, a person with a growth mindset Set, believe that their skills can develop over time and their potential is fluid. These people believe they can improve themselves through hard work, effort and the ability to recognise that setbacks and failure are a necessary thing to grow. With everything in mind, Maki fits perfectly within this category. It's interesting to see that despite living in the same environment and being twins, there's such a large variance in their personalities and ideologies. The moment where both of these characters shine the brightest though is within the basement of the Zenin clan estate. Maki's father ends up utterly beating her, leaving both her and Mai within an inch of their lives. Ogi talks about why he wasn't able to become clan head, and that reason was because of the quality of his children. He goes on to say children must not hold back their parents, or in other words, restrict them. I don't know if it was done intentionally or was just a coincidence, but there's irony in the fact that Maki was given a heavenly restriction and is also be said to be restricting her parents. What follows next is arguably one of the most touching moments in the series. Mai died on her own terms, being able to give her sister one last gift, while also freeing herself from the ostracization of the clan, as well as the hellish future that awaited her as a Jujutsu sorcerer who wasn't necessarily that strong. We also get an explanation as to why twins are a bad omen. In order for someone to gain stronger, they need to sacrifice something or suffer. However, for twins, this rule doesn't always apply, as things like cursed technique and energy treats them as one individual. And this is where the fixed and growth mindsets truly come into play. Even if Maki wants to get stronger, which she does but Mai doesn't want to because she wants to live a simple, stress-free life, Maki will only be able to progress her strength up to a certain point and same thing goes for Mai's cursed technique because of Maki's lack of cursed energy. Mai is essentially the thing chaining Maki down in terms of her progressing in strength. 
She realizes this and sacrifices herself making a curse tool for Maki, but not before giving her one final request to destroy everything. Sandwiched between the panel of Maki killing her father are geese. Now I'm a sound dumb as fuck if these aren't geese, but from what I looked into, geese symbolize family and loyalty. People whose spirit animals are geese make family their highest priority and aren't afraid to sacrifice themselves for them. Again, if these aren't geese then just forget everything I said, maybe Gege just likes birds, I don't know. What we see next is nothing short of an absolute massacre and has some of the most violent and bloody panels we've seen in these series to this point. And if at any point you thought otherwise, then it's in this moment where we can truly see Maki's love for her sister. She's a vessel of unbridled rage tearing through the Zenin clan, and it's a perfect fulfillment of Maya's wish. And I'm certain at this point you've realized these similarities between both Toji and Maki, both having zero cursed energy, both being ostracized from the clan, statements from Naoya, and even the panel formed from her father's fear. As said by Tengen, Toji's existence was able to destroy fate and destiny as he was a man that was able to escape cursed energy. I'm almost certain that Maki being the same will bear a large amount of relevance in the final arc of the story or even here in the calling games depending on how things go. I think I've said all that I really wanted to, if you have any ideas of what you want to see next, drop them in the comments below and yeah, thanks for watching and as always have a nice day.